keeping that water circulating. What's up guys? My name is Tyler Baruch and this is Real Floridian Fishing. And what I have for you today is a DIY for a custom um, bait, bait well slash bait transferring tank. So what we're gonna do is take this 10 gallon brute trash can with these supplies here and turn it into the perfect bait transferring well uh, so you can go and catch your own live bait, keep them happy for hours and hours um, and transfer them safely and effectively to your boat or to the destination you're fishing at or you can just use it as a live well to keep, um, keep your baits happy. This will work really well for any freshwater baits but in my case I'm using it for salt water. Um, I like to go to the piers and sabiki live bait or cast net on the beach and then take them to my bait pen at the dock, keep them alive for upwards of a week and uh, use them when I'm fishing. So I needed a way to transfer my bait um, with the minimum amount possible dying and uh, keeping them happy, keeping them healthy so they'll stay alive longer and um, keep their energy so they can trigger the bite. Okay, start with the trash can. Supplies you're gonna need. What I have here is a Brute made by Rubbermaid 10 gallon trash can. So it's, you know, it's about twice the size of a normal five gallon bucket, but uh, just enough space to keep bigger baits happy for a couple hours and smaller baits happy for, you know, all day up to, up to two days, I'd say. Um, so that was actually $20 online. I'm just gonna go through and, and name what I paid for everything so you get a feel for it. Next, I have a Tsunami through hole live well pump here. Um, these are, I got this for like 12 bucks at West Marine. West Marine, um, you can actually price match. So I think I price matched it to Amazon. It was like 12 or 15 bucks, I don't know, something like that. So that's number two. Next, you're actually gonna need some hose, um, it's just, you know, three quarter inch hose. Um, this is actually marine grade, I had some left over. So I'm gonna use that to connect the live well to the bucket. Next, you're gonna need some battery clips. You're gonna need um, all the connecting pieces for the live well. This, this piece comes with the live well, and then I had to buy this 90 degree aerator spray head um, at West Marine. Um, next, another connecting piece, and most importantly, this gives me the biggest headache. That, I mean, this is going to help you save a bunch of headaches. If you make a tank like this and you don't have a screen at the end like this, what's going to happen is all the scales from the bay is going to clog up. Um, whatever you're using to protect it and it's gonna clog up the bilge or the spray head and You're gonna have a nightmare constantly unclogging that and my last one that I made I did it a little cheaper than this I tried to save a few bucks and I didn't have a good spray uh, a good excuse me. It's not called spray head, a good um, screen like this and I was always unclogging scales. I had to take the tube out and blow all the scales out of the live well pump and it was a huge headache and I lost a lot of bait if I didn't look at it you know every 20 minutes bait was dying so yeah next um, a drill a one inch drill bit and um, that's it for the supply you're also gonna need a 12 volt battery I actually have a little jet ski battery that I use it works great it's not too big not too heavy and I carry it around in a backpack with me when I go catch bait. So I have my battery in the backpack. It takes a, I mean, it's way easier to transport because you can hold this with your hands or put it on a skateboard or a, a cart and then you can have your battery in your backpack. Makes it easy if you're going to go cast net bait on the beach, whatever you want to do. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is take your drill and drill a good hole in a good spot. So I already, I already drilled a hole there and I want to keep my hole a little bit above the bottom for two reasons. One, this thing's pretty 
wide and if I put it right on the bottom it would it wouldn't work. Two, if you ever have sand in your bait well, um, it's not going to suck up the sand or, or if scales and seaweed and stuff floats to the bottom or dead fish, it won't get stuck on there. So I like to keep it up a couple inches, looks like about three inches up from the bottom. That will prevent um, a lot of clogging or or also any of the bad dead fish water. If there is dead fish on the bottom, it's not going to be pumping that nasty stuff back up through the top. So you're going to have better quality water a couple inches from the bottom to keep repumping. That could help them stay alive a little bit longer. Every minute counts with live bait. Okay, so next I'm going to take my five well pump and stick it through here. That one inch bowl is perfect. It's nice and tight fit, barely fits in there. That's what you want to see. Okay, after that, I'm going to go ahead and put my screw cap on there. You're also going to need uh, marine sealant. I'm going to use permanent stuff. I forget what it's called. It's 10W20, whatever. Um, so permanent marine caulking. And you're gonna put that all up in here and on the outside, just so it's a nice permanent waterproof seal. Okay. Now once that's on, I'm gonna take my screen cover. It's actually stainless steel, so you can use all this stuff in salt water. It'll work. And I'm gonna go ahead and screw that on the end. Okay. Now I'm gonna keep end of the pipe um, about a half inch away from the end of this. That's going to create this circular screen and that way nothing should get stuck on here because if a piece of seaweed hits this side there's not going to be enough suction to um, stick anything in there or get the scales to clog the pump. So this is a lifesaver right here. So if you do this part right um, you'll have an awesome live well. Um, so I'm going to leave that right like that. I'm just going to put some caulking there to keep it from unspinning. And uh, that's that. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is take my little connector piece. Got this at Home Depot for a dollar. And I'm going to go ahead and just screw it on to the pump. I believe it's three quarter inch. actually just took my roommate's hair dryer and heated up this pipe right here and it was actually able to stretch so I could shove that, um, that fitting in there and that's not going anywhere it's stuck in there so um, the guy at Home Depot told me to heat it up and it, it would fit and now it's a tight snug fit the thing's not going to come off I don't even need a hose clamp um, so you could buy the right size or, or do that. around the trash can that way all the weight isn't on one side um, so it's kind of going to be suctioning from this side and going to be pumping out over here I'm totally okay with that also if it was straight up and down it wouldn't provide circulation flow in the live well now that it's going to be coming at an angle this, the hose sprayer is going to be spraying back this way and it's going to create a little bit of a, a whirlpool which keeps the bait swimming, keeps them alive longer. If it's just stagnant water, um, your less hardy bait fish are probably going to die a lot sooner than if they have moving water to keep them swimming, keep them in that circular motion. The next thing I've done is I went ahead and put the fitting 
onto the end of the pipe and then I've screwed in my nozzle. So you have two options here. I found this nozzle at Home Depot for a dollar. Um, but you also have the Atwood spray head, which is it's adjustable. Um, you can open and close it with this little twisty knob here. Um, it's also got a watertight seal ready to go. But this was like, I think like 15 or 20 bucks at West Marine. I'm gonna go ahead and return it. Um, if this spray nozzle um, from Lowe's works out. So if this works out, I'm gonna save myself 20 bucks. Um, but I'm gonna keep it around just in case it doesn't work. And it's the same size hole anyway, so I'm not gonna uh, lose anything. Okay, so now that I know right where the hole needs to be, let's see, that was tight. spray head is shooting a little high so the water is going to have to be this full for this to work. I was going to take a zip tie and just zip tie this hose and drill a hole up here to force it to go downwards but then I still have to have a water level of up to here and you know that's it also might ricochet and, and spray water up back out when I have it in the car. So in my case, I'm actually going to go ahead and use the spray nozzle. I've already bought it. Well, I'm just going to use it because um, this is actually going to be a little more effective. But if you want to save the money, you can definitely go with this. I've got the Atwood spray nozzle in. I'm actually really glad I went with that option because it's actually, first of all, it looks a lot nicer and it's going to perform better. So I can twist this thing here and shorten up the spray. I can make it, I can loosen up and have a, a bigger stream. And also I really like the way this is gonna spray. It's gonna spray the water back this way and see how it's going downwards, which means I could have the water half, I could have this half full and it will still be effective and it's still gonna create that circular flow. Um, and the water spraying down means that it's not gonna spray up and get all over your car. If you have a uh, SUV like me, I don't have a truck, I have a Jeep Cherokee, so all that water would be going right on my seats. Um, so yeah, it's starting to take shape here, starting to look like a live well. Okay, so I went ahead and I just put a zip tie there to hold it there to hold it just in case and I also put a piece of plastic over the rings here and screwed that back on now it's nice and tight so I don't have to um, marine seal that um, now all that's left to do is slap the lid on you can get a lid on Amazon for like five six bucks the yellow one was actually six dollars and a white one was like 25 so uh yeah i got a little bit of mismatching but that's okay so there you go lids on it now when you're transporting bait um it's not gonna spill it's not gonna splash water everywhere and there's still a little air flow in there um and 
keep your bait secure, nice and happy. We're pretty much done. The only things that need to be done now is I'm gonna take these wires because they're pretty short and I'm going to connect them to my old wires from my old pump. Um, that way I got a little bit of length so you can have it in a backpack or whatever. And then I'm gonna put some nice new battery clips on it. I'm gonna marine seal the connection here and that's it. I'll have an awesome working live wool. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna roll a clip of me actually using it and um, we'll see how effective it is. But anyways guys, thank you so much for being a part of my channel. I know at, at this point I'm just starting out, but it would mean the world if you could like this video and subscribe. I really am trying to build the channel up so I can do what I love and show you guys um, all my cool ideas for fishing and how to save money, how to make things more effective because it really is my passion. So thank you for watching. Go ahead, like and subscribe and share and um, hopefully we'll roll that clip and we'll see you next time. All right guys, so we're out here at the pier catching bait and here is my custom bait well working perfectly, keeping that water circulating good flow on the beef so we're nice and happy. We got everything from little baits to good sized blue runners in here and they're all super happy so glad it's working. <laughs>